Good morning, everybody. It's Cecilia from Pardon Farm. I am coming at you today from my laundry room, which I know is a little bit odd for me, but it's gonna make sense in a second because today we're talking about tea. Now, I don't mean the kind of tea that you drink. I mean rabbit manure tea. And the reason I wanna to talk to you about it today is because many times when people are doing seed starts in the house, they will add some sort of supplemental fertilizer as the seeds start to grow. Now, understand, when you first plant a seed, that seed has everything it needs to get sprouted and get going. But if you're starting plants early indoors and you're trying to get bigger starts for out in the garden later, then sometimes you need to add some sort of amendment. So some sort of fertilizer um, usually has potassium, nitrogen, calcium, those kinds of things in it to help your plants be really solid when you do go to transplant them out. I started, because I'm impatient, some tomato seeds about three or four weeks ago, and I had these nice little starts, but it has been ridiculously cold here. Today, it was negative 27. And yes, our house is heated, but we live in an old farmhouse, so it is a little drafty. And some of our seedlings look a little bit yellower than I would like. They're not yellow by any means, but when you look at plants, a lot of times you see that dark, vibrant green color. Mine are more of a lemony green color, um, lemon lime-ish green color. So not that deep, dark, healthy plant color that you like to see. So we are going to give them some fertilizer to just sort of help them along. Like I said, we're doing the best we can. We have grow lights, we have a humidifier running in the room that they're in, it's heated, but they are struggling a little more than I would like to see. So we're just gonna give them a little bit of help. Now, this recipe that I'm gonna show you today is my diluted version, and it doesn't contain some of the things that I would use if I was using it for potted plants that are just house plants or container gardening or out in my garden. Um, if you, for some reason, you did not wanna put rabbit manure in your garden and you wanted to use tea, you certainly can. I would just use a stronger concentration than what we're gonna to make today. And I'll talk to you about how to do that in a little bit. But before we get into the recipe on how to make the rabbit manure tea, let's talk about rabbit manure and why it's beneficial and why I think rabbits are one of the things that you need to have on your homestead. Rabbits can eat, our rabbits mostly eat hay that's harvested on our property that is not sprayed with any chemicals or anything like that. And we're not organic, but I would call it natural because we have not gone through the organic um, certification process, but we don't apply any chemicals. So they eat that, they eat weeds out of our garden. And at times, especially in the winter, they're supplemented with rabbit pellets and that's okay too. But so we are controlling everything that goes into the rabbit. And so we control what comes out of the rabbit. And the stuff that's coming out of the rabbit is higher in nitrogen than sheep, goat, chicken, cow, horse, any manure, basically. And it's a cold manure. So it's not something you have to compost before putting on your garden. Unlike chicken manure, for example, if you don't compost it, it can actually damage your seedlings because it is too high in nitrogen and it can make them sort of look yellowish orangish, and they just look sickly for a while. Usually they'll pull through, but it kind of stunts your plants. Another advantage that I like about rabbit manure is it doesn't really smell. Because it's dry and in this pelleted form, it is pretty much odorless unless it gets wet. And in that case, then it can smell a little bit. But if you're harvesting it to put it in your garden, you can put it in your garden wet, that's okay. It's no big deal. It also contains phosphorus, calcium, potassium. And so adding it to your soil, especially in my opinion, in the pelleted forms, helps build your soil structure so that your soil can hold on to moisture. It can hold on to nutrients better. Worms love rabbit manure. And 
worms when they eat it and help it to decompose also add more nutrients to your soil. Now, like I said, because my plants aren't the dark green color that I would really like, we're going to do a watered down version of our typical uh, rabbit manure tea. And you can add all kinds of stuff to this. I personally keep it pretty simple. If I was to be making it for my garden for summertime or for potted plants here in the house, I would also add coffee grounds and eggshells. We personally, I will throw my eggshells either in the oven during the winter or during the summer I'll put them out so that they dry up and I grind them in a coffee grinder super quick uh, so that they're more powdery. And honestly, that's just because when I'm doing my composting, I don't want to see eggshells in my garden. So, and I don't want like the neighborhood cats and stuff to get used to eating out of what looks like eggshells because I feel like that goes very quickly from eating out of eggshells to eating eggs that my chickens sometimes lay outside because they're rebels. So I would add that if I was not doing this for little itty bitty seedlings, but because I'm doing it for seedlings under grow lights and I don't want boom nitrogen and a huge growth, I'm not going to add that today. One quick thing about coffee grounds, a lot of people think that they're very acidic. And after you brew coffee, coffee grounds are actually pH neutral. So if you're using used coffee grounds in your compost or out on your garden, I pour them directly on some peppers. I pour them on some of my tomato plants and stuff like that. They are not acidic. They are high in nitrogen. So you need to be wise about how you do that, but they will not make your acidic, your soil acidic, if that makes sense. And today I am using less rabbit manure than I would if I was doing this for my garden to amend. Because like I said, we don't want, nitrogen will give your plants a boost and makes them want to grow. That is why you don't wanna apply any fertilizer that's high in nitrogen right before they're ready to set fruit because instead of putting its energy into setting fruit, that nitrogen is gonna tell your plant, I should grow more, I should get taller, I should get wider, not I need to set more fruit. So just a few words of wisdom on that. Let's get started with the tutorial for today. It is stupid, stupid simple. And so I'm just gonna show you really quick here in the laundry room how we do it at Part on Farm. I have a five gallon bucket and a lid, and then I have an ice cream pail with rabbit manure in it. Now, you can see that this has hay in it. That is not a problem. We're gonna strain this out before I put it on my seedlings. And even if it didn't, it's just adding carbon and other nutrients to your soil so don't worry about that i this is what i dump directly on my garden hay and all i don't worry about picking through it i know some people who own rabbits that will sell it and they will pick through it it's going on my garden i'm not doing that so you can see i have about a half an ice cream pail so like a half a gallon of rabbit pellets that is what i'm going to use today and i'm just going to put it into the bottom of this five gallon bucket Okay, and then I'm gonna fill the five gallon bucket to about this line here. And I'm gonna sh put the lid on and shake it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this bucket. Just use cold water. If you have rain water, if you have rain water, rain water is better. It has more nutrients than groundwater, but snow, I've read is not the same as rainwater, so not don't melt snow and put it in your compost tea because something happens to the molecules on a molecular level and I'm not a molecular physicist, so I can't explain it to you, but don't use melted snow to water your plants unless that's the only option because you don't have running water or something like that, but um, fun fact. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this bucket up
Now, what you can do is stir it up with something. Many times I will use a stick if I'm doing that, but right now I'm actually not going to stir it because the water agitated it pretty good. So now I'm just gonna put this lid on it nice and tight and I'm gonna let it sit for three, four days and then I'll just slowly start to use it as I need to. Because I added less manure in this batch than I normally would for my garden, I'll just use this for bottom watering my plants until they start to look as healthy as I would like. If you're doing it for your garden, I would use twice as much rabbit pellets. I would heap this bucket up. An ice cream pail full heaped of rabbit pellets. And if you have grass clippings, or I love to use dandelions, which is a great way to keep your kids busy while you're trying to do stuff is, hey, I really need you guys to go around the yard, pick all the dandelions you can and use those dandelion greens. Probably I would use another ice cream pail of dandelion greens. And then I would use about two cups of coffee grounds and about a cup of the pulverized eggshells and that's what I would put in tea that I use on house plants or container gardening or out in the garden if you're so inclined not to put rabbit pellets on your garden. So once you have this all mixed up you can put it somewhere let it sit for three or four days and then I just strain off the top the water that I need to water my plants and leave it continue to sit. If you find that it's not diluted enough, feel free to just add more water to it. If you feel like your plants are growing way too fast, add water to it, it's okay. Or if you find out, you know what, that's really not enough, then supplement, add more rabbit manure, add more or add some coffee grounds, those kinds of things. It really does depend from the nutrition that you're feeding your animal, the nutrition that you're gonna get out of their manure. And that's why here we think it's really important to control their diet and control every aspect of the process as much as you can. Now, if you're on a small scale or you don't have rabbits, if you live in town or things like that, and actually rabbits are one of the animals that are super great to have in town because they're not noisy and you can have them outside in the cage and your neighbors don't really care. Rather, if you have a rooster waking everybody up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, your neighbors seem to care slightly more. But if you don't have rabbit manure, many times you can buy it at farmer's markets. You can also find it on Etsy and all kinds of eBay, online, those kinds of things. Just remember, if you have to buy store-bought fertilizer for your plants, that's okay. But if you're fertilizing seedlings, make sure that you dilute it. Otherwise, you're gonna burn your seedlings and you're gonna stunt their growth and then you might as well have just start it over. So I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Keep on growing.